feel like they defined a generation. I bet you. She's exactly right. We define a generation, people. This just makes me want to go back to school and hate every class again. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Mark, and this is Travis. We play in a band called Blink-182, and today we are going to be reacting to teens who are reacting to videos that we made. <laughs> who is this? Oh, Blink-182. This is Blink-182. <laughs> I've seen some of their music videos. My dad shows them to me a lot. That's good. Do oh, I know this? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No one's commenting about me dancing in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> this is like early punk rock. <laughs> oh my God. Early punk rock. Would you say it's early punk rock? I guess to some kids. Yeah. Yeah. My show, watching. My mom loves this song. My mom's actually on their mailing list for like concerts. See, everybody has cool parents. I will not go. Turn the lights off. Carry me home. Na 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 na. She has good pitch. Wait, what were those outfits? I didn't even take a second to appreciate the all white look they were going for. There you go. Some of these videos, if they don't know who 98 Degrees is or 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 Backstreet Boys, they have no idea we're even copying, and they just think we're in those white outfits. You know what I mean? I didn't. When we first filmed the video, I didn't even know who we were making fun of. I remember we were filming the video, I'm like, this isn't funny. This is like, this is the dumbest video we've ever done. And then it ended up being the biggest video that we'd ever. I thought you were low key a big 98 Degrees fan <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> oh, this is the video my dad showed me. <laughs> They'd like to be shirtless. <laughs> His dad has shown oh, him these videos. Bare naked. What's with them and not having any clothes on? We weren't playing like huge venues. We were playing like clubs. And most of the time, we some sometimes we'd almost be like stripped down to our underwear, or just shorts on. It was so hot, and then um, I think we had mentioned it, like, oh, I remember, like, whatever, so and so, you guys played in your boxers, and then he's like, why don't you guys just be naked in the video? And I don't, it didn't even take much like coursing or anything. We were just like, okay, all right, sure. <laughs> oh my God, how did they film this? We filmed it by wearing skin-colored speedos, people. <laughs> That's how we filmed it. I love the drums. Walked away from me. Nobody likes you when you're 23. This is a really catchy song. Nice. I like their songs a lot. They have a good beat and they're just, they're so catchy. Oh my god. <laughs> Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> then run back. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> what are they doing? They so choose the album cover. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh, no, not the child. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> that poor kid. And that's about the time she walked away. I feel like they defined a generation. I bet you. She's exactly right. <laughs> we define a generation, people. People back in the day was like, oh my god, this band, they're so edgy, they're so over the top. Good song. It's so angsty. Like, nice. Oh my god, what's my age? <laughs> this is iconic. We've been known to be angsty, although that song's not that angsty, I wouldn't say. I guess compared to rock music nowadays, rock, yeah. you know, minus a couple groups, it's pretty, uh, pretty mellow. Hello there. Why does this low-key look like a horror movie from the 1900s? That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Those aesthetics, though. I love these shots. <laughs> Where are you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god, it's so angsty. Angsty. You really they show their versatility in this. Okay, I've heard this. I've heard this chorus before. Inside my yay. I like how they just told his voice. That definitely had like a Panic at the Disco kind of vibe. This one was oh. a bit more slow. I mean, Panic at the Disco has a Blink vibe, people. <laughs> okay, I've heard this one. This one's like really popular, right? Jeez, must be if I've heard it. <laughs> Babies. So Bob, dude. I wish I grew up in this era so that like at parties and stuff you could just rock out to this. Why can't you rock out to parties now? Let's go. Don't wait. <laughs> this is definitely probably the funnest video to film. We 
went to a water park in Canada for two days and just rode water slides. Let us make this night last forever and ever and ever. She knows all the words. I love that, uh, that these kids know songs that we wrote 20 years ago. So angsty, <laughs> but not that angsty. It's just like fun, like very rebellious, and I love it. Are they like getting homeless people and cleaning them up and stuff? That's, that's pretty cool. How recent was this? Like, did they just make a comeback? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this was 10 years ago. This just makes me want to go back to school and hate every class again. <laughs> I feel like if, if people were more open to listening to their music, they would love it. I agree. I, I'm, I'm liking this song a lot. When I think of Blink-182, I think of like the first three songs you played, but now hearing the entire thing, I'm like, there's so many different layers to them. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just good music. You could tell what that their old songs were, and you can, like, they still have their, like, their, like, signature soundish. Thank you. It's, like, elevated in a way. Thank you. That was so fun. I felt like I was at a party. It's such a vibe. It gives me such, like, a rebellious, like, youth. Like, it just makes me want to, like, never want to grow up, ever. I am nice. surprised that... They are this good. I haven't really <laughs> sat and listened to their songs. I was surprised they're them. good. It's kind of what's cool about Blink is right now it's become this multi-generational thing where, you know, we were doing it in the late 90s and we did it through the 2000s and now people that were coming to the shows when they were teenagers are bringing their teenage kids. It's dope, I love it. So Blink-182 released their first album all the way back in 1995 and wow. are still making music today. I did not realize it was that long ago. Yes, indeed. I thought like maybe 1999, but that's, like a solid six years before I was born. Wow. Meaning that not one person in this episode was alive when they first started making music. No, what the heck? Oh, we're babies. <laughs> I was in high school. I have bases older than these kids. It's cool, they, they like they like the music even yeah. though they weren't around for it. A lot of the songs that are like their classic songs, you know, like all the small things, that's constantly played on the radio. Like if you listen to like alternative stations or even if you're just on Spotify and you put on like an alternative rock, you know, playlist that's generated. Like that's just there. That's like a staple song. My mom was a huge fan of Blink-182. So she played a lot of their songs around me when I was growing up. Their Thanks, mom. Is like music that can still be passed on and can still be relevant today. They are passed from my parents. Like my dad, when I'm in his car and stuff like that, we like, oh, hey buddy, listen to this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's Especially so like funny. in the 90s and stuff. Music like that kind of took the world by storm. So it kind of, music like that kind of just lives on longer and longer. So even though you weren't born or were alive during the time that like, the music, like, it kind of changed the music. You still listen to it a lot. That the means the is, world, that's really cool. I grew up on Led Zeppelin, or like Metallica was making records before I was born. They were all fire, and I went back and learned all the old stuff, and listened to the old stuff, and studied the old stuff. I feel like that's great if your music resonates that long. So after listening to some of their music today, what genre would you consider it? I think I'd say rock. Pop, rock, I guess. Rock. <laughs> like, like. Wouldn't this be like considered now like indie rock? <laughs> Maybe alternative, but I mean, there's like different, there's so many different types of rock music. They do sound punkish. I'd say punk rock, something like that, definitely. Punk rock, because it does feel like, they're like it's a it's punkish. I want people to hit me, I want to hit people back, like in a mosh pit, like that would be fun with this music. I think the genre is just kind of dead now. People listen to the music they like and music that means something to them and, you know, I struggle to say what Blink is. I mean, we're definitely started off as a pop punk band, but we draw influence from everywhere. Many people consider them to be kind of like a pop punk band. Oh. Rock. The New York Times even said that no punk band of the 90s has been more influential than Blink-182. Boom! Oh. Panic at the Disco even started off covering Blink songs while artists like Five Seconds of Summer and Avril Lavigne list them as influencers. Wow. So they're like gods in the industry in a way then because <laughs> they brought about many people that are admired as gods right now. So they're like... The gods, gods. Halsey, like wow. she named a song after the band, like so. Even like pop singers, like her, are influenced, and other, you know, rock uh, musicians are too. They walked, so musicians today could run. <laughs> they really influenced a lot of the culture and media today. Do you think people your age would go and check them out, or are teens of today not as interested in Blink One Eighty Two? I mean, 
It's just me, but I myself am pretty interested right now. We're getting less interested in that kind of music, but I still think there's a, a handful of us that appreciate the band. I'm pretty sure there will be <laughs> teens at this concert. They don't feel old. Like, they somehow managed to escape that thing where you hear that they're touring and you go, they're still alive? They're really relevant today because <laughs> Thank you know, you. they've also inspired so many artists, and artists you may have never even thought they would have inspired. Like, that would have never even crossed your mind. Great. It's pretty cool. It's a huge honor to have any band come out and say, you know, that Blink influenced their songwriting style, especially, you know, bands that came up like Panic! at the Disco, who literally came up as a Blink-182 cover band. To know you inspired or influenced anyone to do something um, is awesome. I mean, even us, like, I feel like we came from the punk scene, but just because you come there doesn't mean you're going to make exactly that music. It's like an in, in, you're inspired by it and you make whatever comes out. So Blink-182, thank you so much for taking the time to film with us before your concert here in Irvine, California. We want to ask, seeing how you've been involved with music before these teens were even born and before the rise of YouTube and music streaming services of today, how has the internet impacted your career over the years? I feel like uh, it's much easier for artists to get their music out now. The barrier of entry is so low now that it's accessible to everybody, but it just, it all goes back to the song. Song is king. It kind of does away with the machines, and if you you make a great song, you want to put it out for the world to hear, you can do it. With so much music being on the internet, so much more music comes out, and you're not stuck to like making an album only every two years or whatever yeah. it is. So, yeah, it's fun. It's a cool time to to just you know have a lot of different types of music out there. You guys have often been considered a crucial part of establishing the pop punk genre. What's it been like for you guys to have these associations throughout your career? We didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of like, yeah, we never like set out. We've never been really calculated. We just make the music we want to make. We kind of had that with our self-titled album. It was like anything goes, like make music that we like to make and don't really worry about if it's, you know, I don't know, it fits under the, the Blink-182 umbrella or the box people try to fit you in. Looking to the future, what's next for you guys that your fans can look forward to? Well, we got nine coming out in September. Um, and then beyond that, we are working on an EP of collaborations that are way out with people that would never expect Blink to do collaborations with. Everyone from Pharrell to Uzi, we got a couple songs that we're working on with some other people as well. That's what's fun, is going in and doing something different. So finally, is there anything that you'd like to say back to the teens who reacted to you? Uh, it seems like you all have cool parents who raised you right and, uh, you know, played you good music in the car and around the house, so uh, I'm glad for that. Those were some cool kids. I really, uh, I really liked all their reactions and all their comments and stuff. They were, uh, they were definitely cool. Thank you for listening to Blink-182. We appreciate it. Hey, what's up? We're Blink-182. Thank you very much for watching us today on FB. Our album 9 comes out September 20th. Thank you for watching us. We'll be back soon.